Hello, welcome to this presentation of International Plumbing Code Chapter 9. My name is Thomas and we are continuing our examination of plumbing events in this study. Now, I have to warn you, we are going to look at a lot of diagrams. This presentation is technical and sometimes technical things can be mm, boring. Oh, that's such a bad word. Look, I've heard it said that there is no such thing as a boring subject, only disinterested people. So I'm going to invite you to be an interested person instead of a disinterested person. If this starts to slow down for you, take a time out, pause the video, focus, do some jumping jacks. I don't know, but this is technical and it's important that you understand what we're going to talk about. And what are we going to talk about? We're gonna look at the types of vents. These are the tools in the tool bag of venting that you will get to use. And the more you know about them and how to use them, the better off you're going to be. So that's why we want to focus in on this technical study. But before we get to the tools that you can use for venting, we have a few more regulations that we need to examine. Let's get to it. In 907, we look at the vents for stack offsets. And it says if there are five or more branch intervals above that offset, we need to provide some venting so that as that fluid comes down through that offset, it has enough air to flow. We would need to provide a vent on the upper end of that offset and in the lower end. So you can kind of see how this branches off around that offset and ties back over into the vent stack. Here's an example of how we might branch off on the lower end of this horizontal offset. This is also known as a yoke vent where it's intended to provide airflow into the lower end of that offset. You can see you can just branch off with a Y before that offset 90 and send that vent over to the vent stack. On the upper end, we might branch off with a Y just above that. You can see here it comes off to the left and that's gonna head over to the vent stack. 908 talks about relief vents. When you get a really seriously tall stack with lots of branch intervals coming into it, and you have a seriously tall vent stack next to that catching all the vents. Every so often it's good to have those connect together. That's what this is all about. And specifically it requires that that happen between the 10th and 11th floor levels. So when you get up to that elevation, there's gonna be from the 10th, a branch that just comes off the side of the stack and heads up through to the 11th floor and then comes over and ties into the vent stack. The relief vent has to be equal to the size of the vent stack to which it connects. So this isn't going to be a small pipe. If it's a six inch vent stack, we got a full six inch pipe coming over from the 10th to the 11th floor. The upper connection needs to be not less than three feet above the 11th floor. Now I know you might be saying to yourself, good grief, I've never even been to the 11th floor of a building, let alone plumbed one. Well, that's okay. This is definitely for the downtown plumbers. You're a smarter plumber for knowing it. 909.1, we look at distance from the trap vent. This is one you need to memorize. I will say that. Here we go. On table 906.1, we have a list of trap sizes from one and a quarter up to four. The slope, now this coordinates directly over with our chapter seven. When we looked at slope, and the required slope for certain pipe sizes. But we have quarter inch per foot all the way up to two inch pipe, and then eighth inch per foot for the three and four inch. And then we have distances from the trap. Five feet for an inch and a quarter. Most common ones we'd be dealing with, you might have a one and a half inch horizontal branch coming over for a lath, six feet. That's your limit, how far you can go. What about you're reaching out to get a shower, you're coming through the floor joist, a two inch pipe, how far can you go? Eight feet. Lock these in memory, okay? It's gonna be useful. Take a minute to examine why. Here we have a one and a half inch fixture drain, okay? So just like I mentioned, we're coming over to a lav. Now for every one foot, we're gonna drop down one quarter of an inch. You take that one quarter of an inch for every foot, that's our slope. At two feet, that's a half an inch. At three feet, that's three quarter. At four feet, that's one whole inch. At five feet, that's one and a quarter. And at six feet, that's one and a half inch. Guess what? Our travel just dropped the same width of the pipe, one and a half inch. 
If we go any farther than that, we will lose our vent connection. And that's why there's a limit. Important note on toilets, they do have to connect to a vent. Here we have a toilet connected to a wet vent. But there is no limit to the distance for a self-siphoning and self-refilling fixture like a toilet. It will refill its trap seal every time. So no limits. Here we have a stack with a stack vent and a toilet connected. No limit to the distance. 909.2, read this with me. The total fall of the fixture drain due to the pipe slope shall not exceed the diameter of the fixture drain, nor shall the vent connection of the fixture drain, except for water closets, be below the weir of the trap. Do you know what we're talking about here? This is what was just demonstrated. You can see it illustrated here. The perforated line is showing us the bottom of that trap weir. If that comes above the connection point of the vent over on that stack, then we lose our vents, and that's going to affect the flow. So for that reason, in a vertical application, long sweep fittings like this are not acceptable because it cuts off that vent so quickly. That is why we use Santis in a vertical position. So for the same reason, here's another thing that we do not do. You can see on the left, we've branched off for our fixture coming towards the trap, but then have offset up. This has created an S trap. It loses the vent. And this is not an acceptable way for us to run pipes as we're coming over to a trap. It has to come even and flat over to the trap so that that trap has access to the airflow in the vent. Now toilets are going to be a little different if we really examine the liquid seal on the trap is in the fixture and that is well above where the vent connects. But because this is a toilet, it self siphons and it refills itself. As long as that pipe has airflow and a vent, then that will be fine. So here we see illustrated why again, Santis are good because it gives us that open airflow, that space. It's not restricted by the long sweep of some of our other connection fittings. So we put the Santee in, in that vertical orientation, that is an acceptable way to plumb a vent. 909.3 talks about crown venting. A crown vent is when you have a vent that comes right after the trap. Now if it's too close to the trap, that vent can actually get plugged by the fluids and junk that's coming through the drain. So we can't have that. For that reason, when we're crown venting, and it is still allowed, you have to be two times the pipe diameter downstream. That's, that's still not very far, right? If you have an inch and a half trap, that's only three inches downstream. But this would apply to any time that you're hooking up a trap in a cabinet under the sink. Maybe you're going to do an auto vent. Make sure that you're downstream far enough for any of those vent connections so that as we're crown venting like this, we have that under control. All right, we finally come to it. It's time for us to examine the different types of vents that can be used when we're venting drainage. There are a variety of options within the International Plumbing Code. What we're going to do is we're going to examine each one. I'll try to show you a diagram or an illustration of what that is, but also help you to understand the requirements. Many of these types of vents have specific requirements that define them and often they have a sizing table to go along with them. But what I want you to keep in mind as we look at all of these options is air flow. It's all about air flow, providing air to the drainage so that it can flow. Section 910 gives us our first and most reliable option for any venting and that is the individual vent. There's not a lot to be said about this. There's only a very short paragraph in the code about this because it is so basic. It is that every trap receives its own vent. And when you do it that way, there's plenty of pipe, plenty of air, and everything tends to flow pretty well. Here are some examples of individual vents and diagrams. A kitchen sink with an individual vent. A bathtub with an individual vent coming off the horizontal. A water closet with an individual vent. Or a whole bathroom group, each fixture having its own vent. These individual vents work great, but they are time consuming and they cost a lot in materials by comparison. As we look at some of our other options, have a look at a few improper individual vents. On the right, we have a couple that are done correctly, but in the middle, we have a floor drain coming off and the vent is 
not connected directly to that trap arm. The drain that comes over to the trap is where that vent should be connected, not downstream on the horizontal branch. Here's another similar example. We have the trap arm coming off of the horizontal branch, but there are also fixtures from a stack above. That vent is downstream and not connected directly to the arm of the trap, and therefore it is not venting properly for an individual vent. Likewise, individual vents cannot come off of the side of a stack like this. It would have to come off of that horizontal branch, the arm that goes to the trap, in order to vent properly. Now from here on out, we're going to start looking at venting options that allow us to use less pipe, less connections, and still provide enough airflow for all of these fixtures. 911, we look at the common vent. Let's look at the requirements for a common vent. These requirements are pulled right out of 911. First of all, two traps with one vent. That's the common vent. These traps are required to be located on the same floor level but they can branch off at different levels. The vent is a vertical coming off of that vertical drain. And the upper fixture cannot be a toilet. Common vents are great for things like this, where you've got a washing machine, the washer box on the right, and then a laundry sink connection. They're both connected, two traps, one vent, same floor level. Common venting does have a table, the common vent sizes. On the left, the, there are pipe sizes given, and on the right, the maximum discharge from the upper fixture drain. That's drainage fixture units coming into it. So we see some limits here. May I point out, for example, that a two inch pipe size can handle four drainage fixture units. If you go back to chapter seven, you'll find that a two inch stack can handle six drainage fixture units. So by limiting the number of drainage fixture units that can be put into that pipe, we then ensure that there is enough open airflow. That's how we are able to get more fixtures into one vent. Here are a few more diagrams of common vents. Both fixtures located on the same floor level. They may be at different elevations or the same elevation. These can be used for toilets, back-to-back -back toilets. They have a common vent coming off in the middle of the horizontal branch that they connect to. This can work for vertical if we have back-to-back -back toilets on a stack or even urinals. You can common vent toilets and urinals as well. Here's an example of common vented labs back to back in a series. Let's move on to 912, wet venting. There is so much that can be said on wet venting and there is so much that can be accomplished with wet venting. Let's have a look at this. 912.1, here are the requirements for a wet vent. Number one, two bathroom group maximum. If you look at the list of what is in a bathroom group, that means laths, toilets, showers, tubs. Any combination of those creates a bathroom group. You can have up to two bathroom groups. But if you really think about that, two bathroom groups on one vent, that is six fixtures. Imagine how many vents you would have to run for two bathroom groups if you were individually venting. Wet venting allows us to get so much done with a single vent. Back to the list, they have to be on the same floor level. This can be used in a horizontal or a vertical orientation, and we'll look at some diagrams of that. And every single fixture has to have an individual connection to the wet vent. Here's a basic diagram for a bathroom group that is wet vented. The vent comes off of the lav. The lav drain from point A all the way to point C serves as both a drain and a vent. That vent pipe connected to the lav will provide airflow for the lavatory, the shower, and the toilet. Here's an example with two bathroom groups. Although I think the fixtures are a little bit out of order, we have lav and then a bathtub and then a toilet, but whatever. We still have the six fixtures, all of them vented by that same wet vent. So where's the vent? Well, coming off the top of the lav, we can see it but from point A all the way to E, as we follow that through, the entire drain pipe, that horizontal drain pipe, serves both as a drain and a vent for all of those fixtures. Here's an example of a vertical wet vent. A vertical wet vent is just a stack, but we have the same principle. The stack is coming up, it branches off to the right for the toilet, to the left for the shower, and at the top we have the lav. The lav has a vent and all of the pipe from point A to B is both a drain for the lav and a vent for the other fixtures. 
Now the key principle that I hope you understand here is that when we are wet venting, it is the drain that is also a vent and that extends all the way down to the last fixture in that wet vent system. You can see that illustrated here again. That perforated line represents both the drain and the vent as airflow is provided to all of those fixtures. Let's examine a few violations when it comes to this wet venting. Notice here where the vent is. The labs are the vent. They are the wet vent. As it comes down, we follow it downstream and it is the downstream pipe that creates the wet vent. Notice upstream from there we have a water closet. Well that's okay because it has a connection to the labs. But the violation is when we connect the tub to that water closet pipe. It should be downstream from the labs so that it has an individual connection to the wet vent which extends from the labs down to the downstream bathtub. That's the problem here. Here's another violation. It is important to recognize that the wet vent is isolated to that bathroom group. We are not to run other fixtures or any other drains through those pipes. So how does this work? On the right side we have a lav, toilet, and bathtub. The lav could serve as a wet vent for those fixtures. But coming right through the middle of that, we have the building drain with an automatic clothes washer and then second floor soil stack just dumping stuff right through the middle. All of that extra flow coming through the middle of that bathroom group is going to seriously disrupt the airflow and destroy the wet vent. So how do we handle this? Well, we can branch that off, just have that wet vent bathroom group off to the side and have the building drain come around or next to it. But in short, you're limited to the bathroom group fixtures and you're not supposed to have anything else coming through there. Please notice that in 912.3 we also have a sizing table for wet vent pipes. Two columns, basic stuff. On the left column we have wet vent pipe sizes and then drainage fixture unit loads. Once again what is happening is they are limiting the amount of drainage fixture units that can go into those pipes to enable airflow. For example, a 3 inch pipe for these wet vents is limited to 12 drainage fixture units. A normal horizontal branch 3 inch pipe can have 20 drainage fixture units. So we see that by limiting the number of drainage fixture units going into the pipe, we can maintain a certain amount of airflow which enables that horizontal drain to be both a drain and a vent. Hey, we're making great progress in figuring out what is what when it comes to these tools for venting drainage pipe. Join me in the next presentation. We'll pick it up again in 913. We'll continue to look at the different options we have for drainage vents.